welcome students we are coming to the last part of the unit 4 that is uh, session 10 and in this session we are discussing about the four wheel drive uh, in the last class and uh, are the last session what we have discussed is about the viscous coupling and viscous coupling is the main uh, uh, thing where you are transmitting the torque from the driven to the driver now it is the advanced version of this one now we are transmitting from uh, the driven to the drive to the all wheels all the four wheels here four wheel drive system is actually uh, different from the conventional drive system where in the conventional drive system we will be having the two types of axles that is live axle and the dead axle live axle the one which is having two half shafts with a differential unit and um, the final drive will be there and the transmission was it was from clutch gearbox propeller shaft to the differential and the back and lastly to the final drive and the transmission was given to the rear wheels in case of rear wheel drive system and uh, front wheel at the front axle as a dead axle where it is used for the steering purpose and all but in case of this four wheel drive system we will be having uh, two differential unit and there will be a transfer case and transfer case where it transmits the torque to both the differentials front and uh, rear uh, uh, differentials front differential and the rear differential so this is the table of content that what we have discussed about the viscous coupling and what how it is designed and what is the construction of that viscous coupling and what is the and here the viscosity was the important role played by in the viscous coupling where it transmits the torque from the driven to the driving and in this session <coughs> we deal about the four wheel drive system and what is the need for a four wheel drive system and what are the merits and what are its demerits and as usual we will do it in the uh, some of the test that is multiple choice questions that how it is going to be asked uh, because it is a functional type you know how it is going to be work we don't expect that much of uh, this thing here it is purely a technical based how it is going to be uh, torque is transmitted or transferred from driven to the uh, driven wheels from driver to the driven wheels and here uh, again after that there are uh, different types of the four wheel drive system uh, what are those and in after that we will deal with the permanent four wheel drive system with a viscous coupling how it is going to be happen because we have already discussed about the only viscous coupling how it is going to be transferred the torque is transferred and the construction of this permanent four wheel drive system with the viscous coupling what are the construction and what are the working uh, technologies behind this and the advantages and disadvantages and finally with the some mcqs questions so here this is actually the figure of the front wheel uh, four wheel drive system not front wheel it's a four wheel drive system all the four wheels are going uh, to get the drives or the torque which where you have uh, one front differential another one is a rear differential and in between you have a transfer case transmission is there through the clutch gearbox whatever it is there and you will be having which is transmitted to the transfer case and transfer case divides the power to the rear uh, drive shaft and front drive shafts and through these rear and front drive shafts uh, the torque is transmitted to the differential and from differential it is going to be um, there and in the next uh, yeah in this slide we come on what is the need or the necessity of the four wheel drive system here slipping of wheel occurs when the drive torque on the uh, wheel actually it is uh, slipping of wheel occurs where when the drive torque on the wheel is more than attraction available to the wheel so the vehicle cannot move forward due to its slip though engine is capable of producing enough torque to pull the vehicle the four wheel drive vehicle in four wheel drive vehicle all wheels are driven in four wheel drive vehicles all four wheels are driven the engine torque is distributed to all wheels to drive them the engine torque is actually distributed to all the wheels and because to drive them and now the traction is available to all the wheels here 
whereas in the Walder case, the traction was for the axles only, and only if it is a rear wheel or a front wheel. Here, but in this case, the drive is given to the all the wheels. So therefore, now the traction is each wheel will get the traction, and as the total traction available to vehicle, now it is increased, and now the vehicle can transfer more torque without slip. There will not be any slip because each wheel are getting the traction, and hence four wheel drive system increases the total traction of the vehicle and reduce the chances of slip and reduce the chances of slip this is a four wheel drive also called as 4 into 4 or 4wd four wheel drive It refers to a two axled vehicle driven train capable of providing a torque to all of its wheel simultaneously it may be full time or on demand is a typical linked via a transfer case providing an additional output drive shaft and in many instances additional gear ranges a four wheel drive vehicle with torque supplied to both axles is described as all wheel drive we call it as awd some of the models they have written that awd that is all wheel drive however four wheel drive typically refers to a set of a specific components and functions and intended of road applications off road application which is intended off road applications which generally complies with the modern use of terminologies so what is the merits here actually more acceleration of vehicle because the slippage is very less very minimal almost nil so more acceleration for the vehicle is uh, uh, provided improved handling of vehicle and improved road off road ability improved off road ability when there is no road or something like that the traction is going to be i mean all wheels are getting the traction that's why it the off road ability is also improved there coming to the demerits the disadvantages of this because of this you have to um, uh, uh, what do you call it as um, uh, uh, differentials yes front and rear differentials because of that one and linkages are more the weight is going to be more here and to accommodate all these things you require more space and uh, the less fuel efficiency because it has to overcome some inertia forces so due to the low transmission efficiency the fuel efficiency is low less and the cost of the vehicle will be more it's a more purchase cost and since there are two i mean uh, since more linkages are there the maintenance obviously is going to be Uh, more maintenance then coming to the different types of four wheel drive so the first one is a part time four wheel drive second one you could, again it will be classified as a full time four wheel drive all wheel drive or full time four wheel drive system without a differential lock i mean central differential lock is not there so uh, that is one of the different types and the four, uh, finally variable or automatic four wheel drive system a full time four wheel drive with a central viscous coupling in place of central differential these are the different types of four wheel drive what we get and here this is the actually uh, next now we will move on to the permanent four wheel drive system with a viscous coupling as a figure you are going to see here there is a uh, uh, first one is the engine and second one is the clutch and third one is a gearbox and the fourth one is a front and rear differentials here two fours are there actually this is a front differential and this one is the rear differential and fifth one is the propeller shaft and the ninth one is the viscous coupling so this is about the permanent four wheel drive system where it consists of when we come to the construction of this a four wheel drive system a viscous coupling is a type of self actuated fuel coupling a viscous coupling is a type of self actuated fuel coupling it can be used in a drive train between transfer case and the rear axle if the rear wheels are driving and have normal traction there are no power flows to the front wheels when the rear wheel lose traction and turn faster than the front wheel will then the viscous coupling locks the transfer case now sends power to the front wheel okay 
and now uh, as the rear wheel regain the traction begin turning at the same speed as the front wheel the viscous coupling unlocks and the vehicle resumes driving only the rear wheels uh, as long as they have the normal traction and this coming to the housing of the viscous coupling is attached to and driven by an input shaft driven by an input shaft the housing contains a series of thin plates the housing contains a series of thin plates alternately splined as we have seen in case of viscous coupling it also has thin plates alternately splined to the housing and to the output shaft now here as i told you that uh, uh, in the last class the viscous coupling actually here it is filled with the 90% of the silicon fluid 90% of the silicon fluid and 10% of the air and the fluid which is very viscous the housing Uh, seal uh, it is uh, the housing is sealed to prevent the leakages and hold the pressure that locks the coupling next this is about the construction what we have uh, studied now we will go to how it is going to be work when wheel spin occurs the two set of plates spin greatly at different speeds when wheel spin occurs the two sets of plates spin at greatly different speeds the friction with this silicon fluid heats almost instantly its temperature can reach up to 212 fahrenheit degree in 0.2 seconds up to 212 degree fahrenheit in 0.2 seconds as the heat causes the silicon fluid to expand the resulting pressure forces the plates are locked together because it will adhere glue glue to the as it ad ankolutte anta helidnala it glue it it locks to the plate and it locks together and when the spilling regain traction the silicon fluid cools and the temperature uh, temperature and the pressure drops this unlocks the viscous coupling while the viscous coupling is unlocked two set of plates will rotate at the same speed some slippages can take place this provides the differential action that compensates for the different distances the front and rear will travel in making a turn this system gives the benefit of a four wheel drive without its demerits you don't have any demerits here or disadvantages here and it gives the benefits it does not have a central differential to transfer power between front and rear axles instead it has a propeller shaft and a viscous coupling to connect front and rear axles when needed when needed normally all the power is transferred from the front axles through the front axle and front drive shafts when the speed of the front rear axles is almost equal when the front wheel lose the traction the difference of speed between front axle and the rear axle causes a viscous coupling will come into a picture and it will lock and transfer the power to the rear wheels from the propeller shaft this is about the how it is going to be worked in case of this viscous coupling four wheel permanent drive so now we'll discuss about the i mean we'll look into the advantages what are the advantages here it is a uh, more traction is available a very good balanced weight distribution along the length of the vehicle and even tire wear a better acceleration in lower gear a reduced reduced sensitivity to side wind so uh, along apart from this an increase in the drive off on climbing capacity regardless of the load yes it will give the because the torque is going to be subdued because viscous coupling will play an important role here while climbing capacity is there when there is a difference in the traction yes it increases the drive off and climbing capacity irrespective of the loads and stability reserves on slush and compacted snow tracks so it all depends upon the road condition how it is going to be there and coming to the disadvantages of this are around 6 to 10 percent of weight will be increased curb weight of the vehicle is going to be increased uh, 6 to 10 percent and lower the maximum speed it will lower the maximum speed and 5 to 10 percent increases in the fuel consumptions and a smaller boot compared to the front wheel drive vehicles because space required is more to accommodate this space you will be having a smaller boot area for which okay not i mean next point is next always i mean not always clear in the cornering behavior so uh, cornering behavior while taking a turn there will be a cornering behavior of the vehicles it is not always clear so these are all about what we have discussed uh, of the four wheel drive system 
and we have a list of uh, multiple choice questions here so if you take that an example here in a four wheel drive the number of gear boxes are uh, and the options are 1 2 3 and 4 because since it's a four wheel drive the gear boxes will be there will be two different gear boxes because you have to transmit the torque to the all the four wheels so therefore the gear boxes will be um, two and next comparing a four wheel drive with a two wheel drive system either at front or rear assuming equal division of weight between the two axes so what are the things which is going to be uh, i mean considered here the options given is from the point of view of traction front wheel drive is better than the rear wheel i mean which drive is going to be the best here the question is like that and the second option is front wheel and rear wheel drive are equal third option four wheel drive can always give more traction than either rear or front wheel drive okay then uh d four wheel drive can utilize all the weight of the vehicle only at a particular road friction yes the question says that comparing a four wheel drive to two wheel drive system yeah here the student should not get confused that four wheel drive is a car and two wheel drive is a bike no it is not like that it is a drive system four wheel drive means where all the four wheels are getting attraction and in two wheel drive means it is also a four wheeler but here two wheel drive system means it either a rear wheel or a front wheel this is the drive system in this drive system which is the better you are going to consider here and the right answer is four wheel drive can always give more traction because here all the tracks all the wheels will get the traction because you will be having a two gear boxes here and uh, uh, four wheel drive will get and every every wheel will get a traction therefore either rear or front wheel drive it is two wheel drive a rear wheel drive or front wheel drive will be a two wheel a two, uh, two wheel drive system in that the four wheel drive will always give a more traction that is the answer for that one and these are the some of the questions where you will get and the references where we have gone through this these are the references i hope you have understood and there will not be any doubts here and thank you for listening thank you